Amanda Price stepped up to the ledge of Oyster Cove's tallest building, the Transmutual Credit Union, and peered down 12 stories below Emily Butterfield. Amanda's ex-best friend stood with her slender arms outstretched and a bored expression on her face. Amanda shuddered. This trust fall was going to be an absolute disaster. Standing on the ground, Emily looked more likely to catch a crow than she was to catch her former friend, third hero partner. But Amanda's grandfather, Poppy, was instant that trust was the next phase of the girl's super duo training. Turn around and drop, Poppy shouted up to Amanda. Easy for him to say. Amanda thought, though she knew he was trying to be encouraging, she took a deep breath and imagined Fusili picturing the corkscrew noodles in her mind, thinking about pasta to take her mind off. Of her fear was one of the first wacky tips Poppy had given her after her bug powers had begun to emerge. Her grandfather's instruction to focus on noodles in the face of fear had seemed totally random, but when she tried it, Amanda realized it really did distract her just enough to calm down and keep her insectile powers at bay. And Poppy had made very clear that for this exercise, she was not to use her wings or uber cool exoskeleton of any of the powers that transformed the Mount Manet 7 grader into her amazing alter ego, Buck Girl. So she had to stay calm, and to do that, she had to think of pasta. Poppy's little trust fall was intended to encourage bonding team building and the trust. Amanda was supposed to trust Emily to keep her from splattering like a grasshopper on the windshield of a speeding car. The girls had been on a fairly relentless course of training all summer. Superhuman burpees, flaming car tosses, cow lifting, hurtling parkour and Frida's favorite, lunges around the world. And we now keeping a twice weekly schedule. Their trainings trainers included Poppy, their famous super mom's dragonfly and mother woman, and the infamous revolutionary in exile, Marvella Corazon, better known in Oyster Cove as Frida, the Bedfield's Bedfield's home assistant. The instruction had been going surprisingly well until the start of school changed things. Now Buck Girl was feeling less sure of her partner than ever before. It was like something got twisted and when the bell rang that first day, the moment Emily set her size six foot back inside the hall of Oyster Cove Middle School, she started acting weird. Oh well, like the old Emily. It was as if that stupid bell had erased everything that happened at the end of last year, as if saving their mothers and defeating the exterminator and going through all the relentless training meant nothing to Emily. She hadn't even bothered coming up with a superhero name for herself yet. Quit your lolly gagging and drop, Poppy shouted. Amanda glanced down at Emily once more, who looked bored and completely uninterested in preventing Amanda's head from cracking like melon on the pavement. Drawing the deep breath, Amanda let herself fall. She hurtled toward the ground, picking up speed. She braced for impact as best she could, fully expecting Emily to yank her arms away. Step back from her touching position and wail, ew, rather than have to touch her. But to Amanda's surprise, Emily did not move much. The ground raised to meet her, 
wind whistled in her ears. And then Amanda felt Emily's willowy arms beneath her. Her limbs were stronger than they looked, though Emily's powers were still revealing themselves and were more than a little unpredictable. She was ultra strong, could shatter glass with her stream, and would the power to start an avalanche with a stump on of her feet, and she tapped into her powers most intensively, then she got angry. While Emily did damage to slow Amanda's plummet descent. She also took pains to stretch her body as far as Amanda's as possible, as if she were catching a sack of vomit, a filled diaper or something else nobody wants to touch. As a result, both girls ended up on the ground with Amanda on the bottom of course. Thanks, Amanda grunted when Emily had rolled off of her and she could get air back into her lungs. Emily wasn't just stronger than she looked, she was heavier than she looked too. What was I supposed to do? Let you fall? Emily stood and brushed off her outfit, more concerned about dust than about Amanda, who was still struggling to breathe. Emily turned and started walking toward the Airstream trailer Poppy had parked nearby. Amanda got to her feet and followed. The trailer was their mobile training unit. Amanda absolutely loved the campus curve. Shiny metal, it reminded her of her favorite isopods, Amadili Bide, which most people call, call Roly Polies. She and her best friend and yellow fellow science enthusiast. Vincent Rabiglia had attached silver antenna to the front end of the trailer to enhance the resemblance. It was positively adorable. I'm starving, Emily announced, bang open the door to the shiny rig. Amanda followed Emily up the steps. Poppy was on her heels, looking at his watch and mumbling about something. Amanda's grandfather insisted that the girls replenish themselves with healthy snacks and lots of water at regular intervals. Though they frequently forgot, he frequently forgot what those intervals were. Amanda was especially glad for this time out. She was hungry too, and exhausted both physically and emotionally due to the insane number of lunges done earlier, and Emily's prickly as a cactus demeanor. She needed a break, a long one, and she had a good idea about how to get it. She just had to get Poppy to make good on something he promised earlier in the day. Although Poppy was pretty relentless about the girl's fitness, nutrition, and safety, there were other Quirkier aspects of his personality that Amanda was counting on. 1. Poppy was prone to destruction, extremely prone. 2. Poppy loved to spin yarns, long ones. 3. Poppy had been on the scene during Mother Woman and Dragonfly's golden era. After all, he had he was Dragonfly, Dragonfly's father and was in charge of the duo's wardrobe and accessories in addition of being a premier sidekick in the super circuit. In his 86 years, Poppy had seen and done it all, or knew the people who had. Amanda settled on a comfortable meditation pillow with a handful of other men while Emily on the edge of the folding table, picked at a small cup full of air popcorn. Poppy, tell us about one of the really nasty baddies, Amanda said, putting a bright green bean, bean into her mouth. Hmm, now let me think. Poppy rubbed the stubble on his chin. 
Amanda could practically see him reaching back into the cobweb recesses of his memory. Ah, uh, yes, he exclaimed, grasping a recollection. How about I tell you the story of Petunia Bebosworth? She was an angry one. She was. And you probably know her by her villainous name. He paused for a dramatic effect. Postrasia. Poppy was corny as cereal flakes. But when they heard the name, both those traps. Postrasia. Besides being generally destructive and despicable, Postrasia was also the subject of Amanda's all time favorite episode of a mother's hit show, the most reckless action adventures of Dragonfly and Mother Woman, Oyster Cove Defenders. The notorious foes and antics were scandalous, and she was best known for the time she nearly destroyed Oyster Cove's upscale fashion district. Young Amanda had reenacted the battle scene with a frustration action figure so vigorously and so often that the doll head had fallen clean off.